Normally if you go on a trip, you're the only person there shooting stills. And so when you jump out of a van and there's like four other people pointing cameras, it's kind of a foreign concept, you know? But it's cool and it's, it's crazy seeing how other people work and what they do and what they go for instinctually, you know? I've never really worked alongside four photographers, so I didn't really know what to expect, but I knew it would be a lot of fun and I knew there'd be a lot of like learning and kind of standing back and observing how people work, so I knew it was going to be just like a, a massive journey in itself, just watching like three other people work. It's real easy to come into a place like Wanaka or the South Island and you've just got all this beautiful landscape around and just frame this perfect tourist style image. So I was looking for things a little different, a little bit more tighter cropped with a bit more detail and texture. So shooting the very top of mountainscapes and trying to find things within that. When we're in Wanaka, um, I was looking for stuff a little bit less uh, obvious. I saw some weird graffiti that was on a rock and then, you know, away from the sunrise and whatever, and that was kind of cool, and just looking for something a little bit different. Houdini, show me your ways. I disappear in a flash. Wanaka's climate's so crazy, it's close to the mountains, so like the weather's always changing, you get wild clouds and light, and it changes so quickly. So there's always like amazing scenes to shoot, but living there, it's, you get a bit decent status to it, but as soon as you go away from it, you come home and realise how good it is. Between this trip and a skate trip, it's yeah, it's a complete opposite timeline. Most skate trips, you you're up at like midday or whatever, and then you might be skating till four or five in the morning. And for this, it was like you're up at crack a sparrow's fart, and then you're. Well, I guess we were going all day though. We didn't go till sundown most nights. So we're full on days. We pulled up at one particular spot and the surf was so fun, it was amazing, the lighting was perfect. Um, the sun was out, we were, thought we were going to be on for the whole afternoon and then in typical fashion of the bottom of the South Island, you're in the roaring 40s and things can change in a second. Sure enough, within about a minute we were in like the hugest monsoon you've ever seen and just soaking wet. When we were in the Catlins and and this massive downpour came and he sprints back to the car and he pulls out his like like camera wet weather thing and he sprints back out in the pouring rain and I was like, fuck that. I'm not, I'm not gonna go back out there and be cooked. And he was out there for like another 45 minutes shooting photos around you. And it was so windy. You couldn't see anything, it felt like you were in war or something in the water and it was so like loud and cold. Every raindrop on your face felt like a needle. It was pretty hectic, I thought I was going to get blown out to sea. You can still get amazing photos, well sometimes you can get better photos in those types of conditions, it just makes it much more moody and interesting than like perfectly lit sunny conditions. This trip was kind of the first time I've ever spent a lot of time, you know, with four other people who, who shoot photos. Like Jerry loves to geek out on gear. Beth's just frothing. 
you kind of get all these different worlds molding into one, you know, so you're getting all these different ideas and opinions on things, which is, which is really cool. We're all pulling up to the same fucking spot to take a photo and everyone does it completely differently. Seeing that swell report line up the way it was it got me super excited to get down there into some of those zones because you know they handle really big surf and there's just a lot of amazing landscape and photo opportunities down there. It's not like you're just pointing your camera straight out at sea, you can incorporate so much more of the land into the image and make it far more interesting while still shooting a highly world class wave so it's where you're going to get some of the best photos you've ever taken I think down there. Skating is something I've never shot before, so to see Jake kind of work his magic and to direct people was really cool because that's something that, again, along my journeys, we don't, I don't direct as much. It's more just sort of documentary. That was what was awesome was seeing like how Beth was reacting to Roscoe when he was bailing and shit. I think I was more excited by that almost, you know. Sometimes when you shoot something so often, you're prescribed into certain ways and then when someone comes with you know less bound by rules they'll do something that's maybe even better. If those all those moons align, like today it was really cool. The light behind Roscoe was kind of flaring behind him so it was kind of like this perfect backlit, you know, kind of halo behind him which is sick. Um, this morning we was another sunrise mission. We turned up and it was pretty breathtaking. It's like dreamy marshmallow carved out mountains and down to like this epic little calm lake. It's pretty magical. So I just like ran up the hill, shot a really wide angle and then made my way down, stopping at every sort of level and layer and trying to like create and find different colours and in the stones and yeah then I went up to the left and saw all the boys walking around the corners to the clay like caves and shot them from like yeah a really high angle which was beautiful and brown and white and pink and just really really dreamy, something that yeah you can't find, I don't think, in many places of the world. Since this trip's like pretty much wrapped up, it's gotten me really excited to go on more trips again. I realised how much I missed it and how long it had been since I'd actually done one. It's pretty cool, like, hanging with a bunch of different creatives and who are also super excited. It really pushes you and just, yeah, gets you juiced up to go and shoot more. You, you go on a trip like this and you're kind of like, man, I, you, I should be doing this more often, you know, this type of thing. Because you can do this by yourself, you know what I mean? Like maybe you can't get a fucking heli every weekend, but you can go for a drive and get up at sunrise and, and go and do it. <laughs>